Hi everyone, welcome to episode 20 of On My Studio Table. I can't quite believe I've already got to that number of videos in this series. And once again, thank you so much for your support, your feedback, your comments. Even just by watching this, you are making a difference. So I really appreciate it and thank you. Behind me, you'll see my finished art quilt called The Land Remembers. I shared in detail about this in my last video, so if you've missed it, just go to episode 19 in the playlist called On My Studio Table. There's quite an in-depth explanation of what it is, what it means and how I did it. So I hope you enjoy that if you haven't seen that yet. I really am very happy with this quilt and how it turned out. I didn't have an idea of the end product, I just knew which materials I wanted to use. And quite often when you don't have too many expectations, the end result is much better than what you could have planned. And I often find that this happens when I just allow the materials to speak to me, rather than me trying to force them to do something they might not want to do. And that might sound a bit strange, but I have proved this to be true many times over through the years that I've been making. I'm also going to share in this video some beautiful photos that I took of my foraging walk with my husband the other day. And it was just such a lovely day. The sun was out, the birds were singing, and we just walked up the road and then back down from the top gate on our property and across the paddock. And I just picked leaves as I went. And then I went past the house and picked some more. And I have done um, a foraging walk in a previous video. This one, I'm just sharing with you the beautiful landscape where we live. We have beautiful views of three landmarks, especially from the road that goes through our property. One of them is called South Sister, and the um, radio aerials and TV aerials and phone aerials are all on the top of that because we have quite a mountainous area here. In fact, all of Tasmania is mountainous, and it needs high points for those things to be able to transmit and for us to receive. Another landmark is called St Patrick's Head and it was called that in the early days of settlement because it resembled a bishop's mitre, especially when you look from the west to the east. From our side we're looking north so we don't quite see the perfect triangle that you see from the other direction. And then on the eastern side we have Mount Elephant. And the reason it's been named that is because it looks like an elephant lying down when you drive down the Fingal Valley towards St Mary's. So I hope you enjoy this. The trees are beautiful and it's just something that I wanted to share with you today. the leaves that I foraged on the walk that I took with my husband, I eco printed two beautiful vintage silk kimonos. I've had them for some months and I did do one a few years ago which sold 
and it took me a while to have the courage to actually eco print on that one and the same was true of these two so I did them this week but unfortunately I'm not totally happy with them I'm going to show you the two kimonos that I mentioned but before I do that I just thought I would show you this jumper that I did a little while ago using the same leaves as I did on the kimono this was done in an onion skin dye pot wrapped around copper pipe and you'll see that the leaves that I've collected from our property, some have printed a beautiful orange and some have printed more a greeny tan colour. And these were the colours I was hoping to get on the kimono. But as you will see, that's not what happened. So I'll just take this away and you can have a look. So this is one kimono. It's not been ironed yet, so it's not looking its best. But these are some of the leaves that usually print orange for me and you can see there's a hint of orange there but it actually hasn't done a lot and when I take this kimono away and show you the next one these also have not printed in very orange colors uh, most of them have done uh, very muted colors even the ones like here which have a hint of orange now usually when I do things in my dirty pot I have great success with the orange but I do know that it can depend on atmosphere when you pick the leaves and so on I found that out from experience so now I need to think about how I'm going to not rescue I don't think rescue is the right word but how I can improve um, these two kimonos and I've been thinking about it and I thought maybe one thing that I could do was to wrap them around copper pipe as I did with the jumper there it is and then do them in an onion skin uh, dye pot I don't have enough onion skins at the moment so I might do a bit of a call out um, on Facebook and so that anyone who lives locally might like to save their brown onion skins for me so that I can do a big pot and then I can put the kimonos in. They need a lot of room because there's a lot of fabric in them. The other thing I could do is do them again but in plain water and scatter onion skins over it because that will bring gold highlights and orange highlights and maybe even pick some more eucalyptus leaves and scatter them on the top too. But as I said, do them in plain water. So those are some of the ideas I have. Maybe you have other ideas that you could suggest, so I would really love it if you could do that. I'm also going to share with you a piece that I think I did show you a few videos back. It's a meditation cloth and I started this because sometimes I just need a break in between the other projects. Your brain actually does work overtime sometimes while you're trying to create. So sometimes you need something that doesn't require too much thought. So it was just a piece of wool that I got from a bag of scraps from the Waverley Mill in Launceston. This is a mill that's been going for well over a hundred years and I love using uh, wool that's been woven there. So I'll be sharing that. I'll also be sharing that I'm adding to it. I felt like it was actually a background for something. So I finished the meditation stitching and now I'm adding another layer. I love the way the stitching added texture to this beautiful woven cloth. There are a lot of um, textures already in the material but the stitching added another level to the textures and I really do like that, it reminds me of tweed. I did um, add my layers as I mentioned earlier in the video and these are scraps from my scrap baskets, all naturally dyed, not terribly interesting in themselves but with stitching and put, being put on a background it really does uh, bring them to life and means that they can be used. I've used uh, silk, linen, cotton and flannel. Most of it, as I said, is naturally dyed except for this piece. And if you remember my uh, art quilt that I've just finished called The Land Remembers, I have used some of this in it. Now all of these scraps I have cut 
very minimally. So they're used as they are, as I got them out of the scrap basket. And now I'm just stitching them down. And then I'll think about the next stage while I'm stitching. I use this same process when I make my scrolls. And um, it's amazing how the action of stitching can actually inspire you as to what's going to happen next. The other thing about this cloth is that I did attempt to eco print it. And you can see some shadows of eucalyptus leaf prints here, but uh, they didn't print very well. I do like how they have added a bit of interest to the background, however. So never feel that something is a failure. Um, you can always add stitching, you can always cut it up, you can layer it with other things. There's always something you can do, and then they come into their own. Also going to share with you the latest journal pages. I've actually got two to share with you because I didn't share one last time. I hadn't actually done it. So this time I have done two journal pages which I'll be showing you and they are really interesting. The processes are really interesting too. I've also revamped book one. So book two is the one I'm working on. Book one, if you remember from a few videos ago, I actually almost ruined because I had done it in pencil which was smudging so I went over it in pen but when I tried to rub the pencil out it really smudged and wouldn't come off. So what I've done is I've ordered another uh, book blank I think you call it and taken everything out of the first one and put it in the second one and rewrote the um, little bits of journal writing and I'm much happier with it. I finished it this morning. So I'm going to share that as a special video for my Kofi members and my Gone Rustic VIP members. If you haven't joined Kofi yet or have become a VIP, you have access to things that you don't have access to on my general YouTube channel or on my social media pages. So if you would like to support me but also see some things and enjoy some things that I share that no one else does, then uh, I've put the links down below for you to join if you would like to. I'm very happy with the result now with this book. I was worried about it because I loved working on it and I was really disappointed when uh, things went wrong. But usually there is a solution and sometimes you just have to think about it and uh, put it away for a while and then the solution reveals itself. This is book one, totally revamped and I'm so much happier with it. I won't show you the whole thing because as I said that's going to be a special video um, but I will just give you a glimpse. So I open it and 
there is the first page and I started with giving myself permission basically to take time to do this and make space just for my own enjoyment and I've redone everything so I took these out of the previous journal section restuck them down into this with uh, archival double-sided tape and wrote down the journal excerpts again by hand and also the phrase or word that I put underneath and my initials and the dates so that's the date I actually wrote this little piece um, even though it's in a 2024 journal so it's all done so happy with it um, I feel like it's been uh, given a new lease of life and if you're interested in what I used it's actually a book blank made from cardi paper that's already bound and all I did was slide the back page into the pocket on in my uh, journal cover um, and as I said moved everything from the other uh, one which I wasn't happy with into this new one This is the second journal, which is also nearly full because we're now in October and we've only got till the end of December to go. And when I open it, I'll just go to the page for the last two entries. So this one was based on scrap applique. And um, when Catherine Chambers of K3N demonstrated this for us to be inspired by, she did a butterfly and it turned out beautifully. And as usual, I went my own way, used scraps as she did, but uh, did a fantasy flower instead. The background is a piece of thin wool, which I've used quite a bit already if you've been watching my videos. I cut the leaves from a felted jumper. It had already been felted when I got it. And I've used lots of it for different projects. So these were little scraps that I had left. This is a piece of cotton. And I think these are also cotton. And then I've, after stitching them down with running stitch, I've added some embroidery, mainly with chain stitch. And uh, I really had fun doing this. What I've written to go with it reads like this. Five minutes outside and I am refreshed and then underneath, refreshed. This is a beautiful linen sample given to me by a local weaver some years ago, and it's just been waiting for something, and this was it. We pulled threads from uh, the edges or even from the middle and then stitched them down onto the cloth. So they were taken out but then they were reincorporated. I also cut off a bit of selvage because I couldn't pull the threads out and then I stitched that back on. So there's definitely no waste in this. The bit of journaling that I included with this reads, a hint of rain, tiny spatters on my face. And then underneath, tiny spatters.
last but not least, I'd like to share with you an exhibition that my husband and I visited last weekend. This is an exhibition that I enter every year. It's called Minds Do Matter and it's about raising awareness of mental health. And it doesn't mean that you have to have a mental health issue yourself. It may be a family member, it may be someone you know. In fact, in Australia, four out of five people do suffer from depression at some stage in their lives. Sometimes it's a permanent situation, other times it's temporary. And I must admit that uh, because I experienced a breakdown due to work stress and a toxic workplace a few years ago, I do understand what it's like to be in a place where things are looking very black and you don't know how to go on. So I really do like to enter this exhibition as often as I can. And as I said, I've been entering it for a few years now. The artwork that people do is absolutely amazing. They have entries from school children, school groups, uh, individual people, all styles of artwork, including textiles, stitch, collage, painting, pastel work, uh, 3D, um, video entries, even some with their own lighting. So I took some photos of the general exhibition and then I also have done some close-ups of ones that stood out to me. So it's totally subjective. I chose the ones that really spoke to my heart and I hope they do to yours too. And where possible, I have also included the name of the artist and the title of the work. It takes place in a community gallery behind the Queen Victoria Museum and Art Gallery in Launceston. It is a beautiful space. The whole complex, which includes the university also, has been converted from an old railway yard. When we first came to Tasmania it was still operating and it employed many many people. Uh, then it closed, uh, I think it was in the 70s but I'm not 100% sure, and it sat there empty for quite a long time. It's a very big complex and when it became converted into the university and then into the museum complex we were so pleased to see it being put to use. The community gallery may not look like a lot from outside because it's quite an industrial building but when you go inside what a beautiful space it is it even has a parquetry floor so i hope you enjoy my little tour through the mind do matter exhibition